Wait a second, the two guys that made it onto the German submarine, the U-94, yeah. before they jump in the water, were just wearing their boxer shorts, right? Yes. Yeah. How in the hell did they lose their boxer shorts? Their official statement is that the currents that night apparently knocked them off. So they board the submarine with handguns and nothing else. Yeah. Buck naked. Yep. Like I said, the Germans were in for quite a shock. But that picture right there is kind of funny because they kind of left out the part where they had lost their shorts on the way over. My name is Ken Stano with the YouTube channel History X. On a recent episode of the video podcast Museum Ship Mafia. The HMCS Oakville was a flower class Corvette. The story I'm telling tonight is her encounter with U-94, a German U-boat, which was on patrol in August of 1942 in the Caribbean. Her mission was to sink oilers that were making their way towards Canada. As part of a convoy, she targeted a fleet that just so happened to have the Oakville. During the attack, a PBY would actually disable the U-boat, forcing her to surface. And Oakville would proceed to engage in a surface action and would attempt to ram the U-boat. Her first attempt was a glancing blow. Her second attack was a glancing bow. During this time, they're so close together, the crew is chucking Coca-Cola bottles at the <laughs> decks of the U-94. Her third ram was successful. But because the flower goes up and over it, she cuts off her own sonar dish, or ASDEC, mm -hmm. and as a result, she starts flooding and loses power. The Oakville's captain orders 14 men on the deck. They're going to do a boarding action of U-94. However, unfortunately, as they gather on the forecastle, the four-inch gun on the Flower Class Corvette fires, and the concussion of the blast actually knocks them all out. Two men manage to regain consciousness before both powerless ships drift away from each other. These two men, who are wearing nothing but their shorts, a gas mask, and a gun belt, are sent over the side to board the U-94. By the time they make it to U-94, both of them had lost their shorts. So it was quite a sight for the Germans who come up on deck and see these two Canadians coming aboard with nothing but gas masks and pistols drawn. And supposedly the first two Germans jumped overboard upon seeing that sight. Mm. One of the sailors held the crew at gunpoint on the stern of the sub while the other guy went in and searched. And unfortunately, the Germans had done a very good job at destroying their gear, all their code books. So he ultimately got nothing out of it. But they all get off the ship. And what ends up happening is that most of them end up being retrieved by the USS Lee, which was an American four stacker, a Wilkes class. And ultimately they determine the Canadians from the Germans by basically how many English swear words the Canadians know. And then they're allowed to return to Oakville. But that picture right there is kind of funny because it would actually end up being basically promoted and i just find it funny how they kind of left out the part where they lost their shorts on the way over so for the pictures the ones with the submarine is that is that the submarine that's u-94 so did it actually oh, sink or did they capture it yes or? uh u-94 would ultimately sink she was damaged she had been hit by a, a pby as well as depth charges she was actually hit by depth charges while on the surface and supposedly the blast broke her keel from below as well. So mm. yeah, they beat the heck out of her. And they also put a four inch explosive shell right through her mast as well. So yeah, Oakville wasn't taking any trophies that night. So wait a second. So the two guys that made it onto the German submarine, it was just two guys, right? Yeah, they assembled 14 guys. The gun knocks out all of them, but two of them managed to wake up and get over the side before they drifted apart. The two guys were Sub-Lieutenant Hall Lawrence and Petty Officer A.J. Powell. Those were the two guys who got aboard. And they're basically, before they jump in the water or whatever, they're just wearing their boxer shorts, right? Yeah, because this is Canadians in the tropics. Okay, yeah, because it's just east of Cuba, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they were just east of Cuba. How in the hell did they lose their boxer shorts? Their official statement is that the currents that night apparently knocked them off. And one guy says his snapped off him as he hit the water. So they board the submarine with handguns and nothing else. Their gun belts and their gas masks. That's it. Buck naked. Yep. Like I said, the Germans were in quite, for quite a shock. What time did this all go down? 
This happened in August of 1942. You know what time of day? It was at night. That just made me laugh. And there's another part of that story, too. So it's just badass. What? It's just badass. They're jumping off of a perfectly good ship onto yeah. a sinking submarine to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But hold on a second. So there's another part to the story. So everybody kind of knows the story of the U-505, where the plan was to try and take a U-boat so that they could grab the Enigma. And the DEs, help me out, John, was it the Pillsbury? Yeah, Pillsbury was one of the main ones, yeah. So these guys are ready to go. They've got their crew, their boarding crew ready. The story that I read about the Oakville was that all of a sudden here they are they're trying to ram the sub they can't get it the first time then they get it the second time they kind of scrape over it though and then the captain says all right guys we're gonna board and everyone looks around and they go uh what <laughs> and so they yeah, start man. going to the weapons locker and they can't figure out how to put the gun belts on yeah Tell it should be they- noted that the guys selected to do the boarding were the guys who were on the day shift this is night shift so they had been woken up we're at their action stations and then told, hey, you're going over there. And they rammed that U-boat three times. Oh, the first times. two were glancing bros. And then the third blow, they actually knocked off her uh, sonar when that had happened. The Oakville herself lost power as a result because she was only 20% larger in tonnage than the U-boat. She wasn't that much bigger. And her skipper was a former Royal Navy captain who had actually commanded Q-boats during the first war. So he definitely was sort of a fighting guy to be in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like John said, it's a badass thing to just have these guys jump in the water after a gun goes off. What was that? Like a four? It was a four or- yeah, it was a four inch gun. Four inch gun goes off like right by their heads. None of them can hear. They get knocked in the water. Their boxer shorts are ripped off and these guys climb onto a German U-boat buck naked. But yeah, I love stories like that. Well, and it was the Oakville. They were throwing Coke bottles at the German U-boat. Yeah. <laughs> they apparently had a box of empty Coke bottles that they start throwing the bottles at the decks of the U-94. That's great. 